All right, everyone, buckle up, because today we are diving headfirst into a topic that sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction movie. We're talking about Brian Johnson, a tech entrepreneur who's basically trying to, well, not die, or at least he wants to live way longer than any of us ever have before. And he's going about it in a way that's pretty mind-blowing, right? Yeah. I mean, he's using this thing called biohacking to kind of take control of his own aging process. Yeah, it's kind of like taking all the healthy habits we've heard about, but cranking them up to 11. Like, we're talking meticulously tracking data, following a super strict diet and exercise plan, and even undergoing some pretty high-tech therapies. Right, and he calls this whole system his blueprint, like he's trying to engineer his own longevity. It really makes you wonder, how much control can we actually have over our own biology? And what are the ethical implications of all of this? Exactly. And those are some of the questions we're going to be exploring in this deep dive. So to give everyone a better picture, imagine this. Johnson's daily routine is like a carefully orchestrated machine. He wakes up at the same time every day, eats the exact same number of calories, all plant-based, of course, and takes a whole bunch of supplements. Whoa, hold on, supplements? Like, what kind of supplements are we talking about? Well, that's where the data part comes in. Yeah. He tracks everything, I mean, everything, from his sleep to his heart rate variability to all sorts of blood markers and hormone levels. So it's not just like grabbing a random multivitamin off the shelf? No, not at all. Yeah. He uses all of this data to figure out exactly what his body needs and then adjusts his supplement regimen accordingly. It's like personalized medicine, but on a whole other level. But I gotta say, that sounds super intense. Who has time for all of that? <laughs> it's definitely not for everyone, but for Johnson, it's all part of his grand plan to optimize his health and slow down aging. Okay, so he's not just trying to live longer, he's trying to actually reverse the aging process. Is that even possible? Well, that's where the concept of biological age comes in. It's different from your chronological age, which is just the number of years you've been alive. Right, I get that. Biological age, on the other hand, is more like a measure of how well your body is functioning. Ah, uh, so like how old your body actually seems, regardless of how many birthdays you've had. Exactly, and it's influenced by things like lifestyle, diet, genetics, and even stress. So Johnson is trying to make his biological age younger than his actual age. You got, he's trying to slow down or even reverse the wear and tear on his body at a cellular level. Wow, that's some next level stuff. So what kind of crazy techniques are we talking about here? Well, some of them are pretty standard, like exercising regularly and eating a healthy diet. Okay, that makes sense. But he's also doing things that are a little more out there, like plasma exchanges and stem cell injections. Hold up, plasma exchanges? That sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It might sound futuristic, but it's a real therapy that's used for various conditions. So what does it actually involve? It's kind of like an oil change for your blood. You basically remove some of your old blood plasma and replace it with fresh filtered plasma. Interesting, and what about the stem cell injections? Stem cells are kind of like the blank slates of your body. They can develop into all sorts of different cell types. So the idea is that you inject these stem cells into your body and they help to regenerate and repair damaged tissues. Precisely, it's still experimental, but there's a lot of exciting research happening in this area. I bet, so is all of this actually proven to work or is Johnson just experimenting and hoping for the best? That's the million dollar question. Some of these therapies are pretty well established, but others are still in the early stages of research. So there's a certain amount of risk involved. Definitely, but Johnson seems to be comfortable with that. It's almost like he's betting on the future of medicine, hoping that new breakthroughs will come along and help him live even longer. Exactly, and we'll dive into that more in the next part of our deep dive when we talk about his don't die plan. Okay, I am definitely intrigued. This is getting really interesting. Yeah, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to explore. We've got a lot to unpack here. We do, so stay tuned. You know, we've been talking about all these amazing things Johnson is doing, but it also sounds kind of, well, restrictive. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Like, is there any room for fun in this whole biohacking thing? It seems like it's all about data and routines and, you know, not really enjoying life. That's a really good point, and it raises a big question. What are the trade-offs here? I mean, is a life that's super focused on just living longer actually a good life? Exactly. Like, what's the point of making it to 150 if you haven't actually enjoyed the years leading up to it? Imagine never being able to just grab ice cream with a friend or stay up late watching a movie because it might mess up your sleep schedule. It does make you wonder about the quality of life versus just the quantity of years, right? Yeah, and I think a lot of people would agree that some of the best moments in life are those spontaneous, unplanned ones. You can't really schedule those into a spreadsheet. True. 
And that's where Johnson's approach, while incredibly interesting, might not be for everyone. We're complex beings. We need things like connection and creativity, those moments of surprise and joy. Focusing only on biological data might miss some of those really essential parts of being human. I totally agree. And let's be honest, even if you could somehow eliminate all the biological risks of aging, wouldn't there be other challenges to living for that long? Like imagine outliving all of your friends and family. That's got to be a pretty heavy thing to deal with. Absolutely. And it highlights how important social connections are to our well-being. We're wired for relationships that give us purpose, a sense of belonging, and a feeling of continuity. A life without those things would raise some pretty profound questions about what it means to be alive. It's a lot to think about. You know, if you live to be 150, how many times would you have to say goodbye to loved ones? How would you even begin to process that kind of grief over and over again? It's a heavy thought. And it also brings up another point. Johnson's approach to longevity requires a ton of resources. He has access to cutting-edge therapies, personalized medicine, a whole team of experts monitoring his every move. Right, which makes you wonder, if these longevity breakthroughs do happen, will they only be available to the super rich? Will it create even bigger divides in society? It's a real concern. If longevity becomes something you can just buy, it could have some pretty serious implications. Imagine a world where the wealthy can essentially live forever while everyone else is still subject to the natural limits of lifespan. It's like something out of a dystopian novel. And what about the impact on the planet? More people living longer would put a huge strain on resources, the environment, everything. You're right. It's a complex issue with a lot of factors to consider. So it's not just about the individual's quest for a longer life. It's about the societal implications as well. Exactly. And those are conversations we need to be having now as these technologies continue to advance. Okay, so we've talked about some potential downsides and ethical concerns, but at the end of the day, isn't Johnson's experiment still pushing the boundaries of what we know about aging? Even if he doesn't achieve immortality, there's a lot we can learn from what he's doing. Oh, absolutely. He's kind of like a pioneer exploring uncharted territory. His approach might not be for everyone, but his willingness to experiment could lead to some really important discoveries that benefit us all. It's like... Maybe we don't all need to track every breath we take or live on kale and supplements, but there might be some valuable lessons we can take away from his journey. For sure. And maybe it's about finding that balance, right? Between optimizing for health and actually enjoying life in the process. So let's shift gears for a minute. We've talked about the science and the consequences, but what about the bigger picture? What does all of this tell us about our desire for a longer life? And what does it really mean to live a fulfilling life anyway. I think it's easy to get kind of swept up in all the cool science, you know, and all the like mind blowing possibilities of living longer. But when you really stop and think about it, Brian Johnson's story really forces us to ask some big questions about what it means to be human, you know? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's so much more than just trying to extend our lifespan. It's really about understanding what gives life meaning. What makes it fulfilling? Is it just about squeezing every last second out of our existence? Or is there something to be said for embracing the natural cycle of life and death? Right. Because death is kind of a taboo subject, right? Like, we don't really talk about it much in our culture. We're so obsessed with youth and longevity that we kind of forget that, the, you know, our time is limited. But maybe there's something kind of freeing about accepting that. I think so, yeah. There's a certain beauty in impermanence, in knowing that things don't last forever. It makes each moment precious. If we knew we were going to live for hundreds of years, would we still appreciate the little things in the same way? That's a really good point. Would we have that same sense of urgency to pursue our passions, to connect with the people we love? It makes you think, right? Like, it makes me think about my own priorities. Am I spending my time on things that really matter to me, or am I just kind of going through the motions? I think Johnson's story is a good reminder that, you know, we do have a finite amount of time, and it's up to each of us to decide how we want to spend it. Do we want to focus on strict routines and optimizing every little thing? Or do we want to prioritize experiences, relationships, the things that bring us joy? And there's no right or wrong answer, right? It's about figuring out what works for you, what aligns with your values. Exactly. Some people might find fulfillment in pursuing longevity, while others might find it in embracing the present moment. It's all about what makes a meaningful life for you. And that's a conversation worth having, no matter who you are.
Right. Whether you're a biohacking enthusiast or just someone who's trying to figure out how to live a good life. And it's a conversation that doesn't end here. There are so many different perspectives to consider, so many paths to explore. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Brian Johnson and his quest for, you know, kind of immortality, we want to leave you with this. What does Johnson's story make you think about your own life, your own definition of a fulfilling life? Maybe it inspires you to try some new healthy habits, or maybe it makes you appreciate the simple things a little bit more. Whatever it is, we encourage you to keep exploring these questions. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep living a life that feels authentic to you. Because that's what it's all about, right? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll catch you next time.